Are you interested in learning how to fetch multiple rows from the DB2 table with the help of a DB2 cursor? If yes, then you should definitely watch this video till the end. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to today's session on how to fetch multiple rows with DB2 cursor. So let's get started with today's agenda. We start today's session with an introduction to COBOL DB2 application, followed by a brief description of the DB2 cursor and why it is used in COBOL DB2 programs. After that, we will discuss how to fetch multiple rows with a DB2 cursor and what are the benefits of using multi-row fetch technique in your COBOL DB2 programs. Finally, we will conclude this session with a sample COBOL DB2 program to demonstrate how to use multi-row fetch technique in your COBOL programs. So ladies and gentlemen, before I start with today's presentation, I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel. So let's get started. Okay, so the first question is, what is a COBOL DB2 program or application? So in layman term, a COBOL program that reads or write data to a DB2 database by using embedded SQL statements or DB2 cursor are called as COBOL DB2 programs. Now let's move on to our next question. That is, what is a DB2 cursor? So in layman term, a DB2 cursor is a mechanism by which you access data row by row from the result set. And this result set is created once the embedded SQL statement is executed. And this embedded SQL statement is specified when you are defining your cursor. So cursor in DB2 keep a track of record in the result set. And with the help of cursor, you can read, update, or delete any row from the table. Now you might be thinking that why you need cursor? Why can't you use a simple COBOL read statement to read data from the table? So precisely, our next question will answer that point. So our next question is, why do you need cursor in your COBOL DB2 applications? So you'll be surprised to know that DB2 cursor was designed to bridge the gap between the SQL and the host language processing. When I say host language, it is your COBOL, .NET, Java, C++, or any other programming language that is interacting with a database. So these programming languages are capable of processing single record at a time. On the other hand, SQL operates on a set of rows. So this is the basic difference between host language processing and an SQL language altogether. And without using DB2 cursor, it is absolutely impossible for a COBOL program to navigate through a set of rows which is created as a result of an embedded SQL statement. So before moving to our next section, that is single row versus multi-row fetch technique, let's talk about DB2 cursor stages. The entire life cycle of DB2 cursor is divided into four different stages. First one is declare, second one is open, and third one is fetch, and the last one is close. And remember, all these four stages should be defined in your COBOL program in order to perform any operation on your data that is stored in your database. If you want to learn more about the different stages of DB2 cursor and how exactly you can use DB2 cursor in your COBOL DB2 program to fetch individual rows, then do watch my previous video because that video clearly outlined the DB2 cursor concept and how you can use that in your COBOL DB2 program. The link is already provided in the description and it is also available in the top right hand corner of the screen. Now let's talk about the basic difference between the retrieval of single row versus multiple row when you execute your fetch statement. So whenever you are executing a fetch statement, you always end up with either with a single row or with a multiple row. And that depends on your requirement and the way you have included the code in your COBOL program. So when I say single row fetch, that means that when you execute the fetch statement, you'll get single row from the result set. And remember, in case if there is no row in the result set, then you won't get anything. And in case if you have multiple rows or like 10 rows, 20 rows, 30 rows in your result set, then you're going to get the single row. 
right on the other hand you have multi row fetch technique where you will be specifying the number of rows you want to fetch when you execute the fetch command right so in this case let's assume you have 100 rows in your result set and you have specified that 10 rows should be returned when you execute the fetch statement so in this case you'll get a bunch of 10 records at the same time when you execute the fetch statement so i hope you can clearly understand the basic difference so the basic difference is that if you specify one row or default is single row at a time and if you specify 10 row 20 row or maybe n number of rows then your system will going to return those many number of rows to you when you execute the fetch statement and remember you should have a proper underlying structure defined in your COBOL program to hold all these rows that is returned by your fetch statement. Now coming back to the performance of COBOL DB2 application when it uses DB2 cursors multi row fetch technique. So the first and foremost benefit is that you can retrieve multiple rows at the same time. And it is very beneficial when you're dealing with large amount of data in distributed systems. By retrieving multiple rows with a single fetch statement, you eliminate the need of multiple calls from an application program to the database. And thus, this will improve the network performance and the overall performance of an application program. Now let's move on to our next section where we'll try to understand how you can leverage this feature of multi-row fetch in your COBOL DB2 program and how exactly you can implement in your COBOL programs and what are the different stages. So in general, there are two different ways through which you can implement this feature in your COBOL DB2 program. And in both cases, you must have to define the appropriate structure to receive multi-row data. This means you must have to define an array of host variables into which the fetch data will be stored and your program can further process that data. And you can either use simple cursor or probably cursor with row set positioning. The preferred option is cursor with row set positioning. Now let's move on to our next section where we'll try to understand what are the different component or the piece of logic that you need to define in your COBOL DB2 program and how exactly that piece of logic is mapped across different stages of DB2 cursor. And finally, we'll wrap up the session with a sample COBOL DB2 program so that you can understand how exactly you can implement this piece of logic in your COBOL DB2 program to fetch multiple rows with an individual fetch statement. So let's get started. So when you're writing a COBOL DB2 program to fetch multiple rows from the result set, so your program should have two important declaration. First one is you need to define array of host variables. These host variables will be used to receive data from the result set. The data type of these host variable should be in line with the column data type. Apart from that, each column that you're fetching in your SQL statement should have corresponding host variable in your COBOL program. After that, you have to define cursor in your COBOL DB2 program working storage section and this cursor could be a simple cursor or cursor with row set positioning. In fact, the preferred option is cursor with row set positioning because it comes with additional features or functionality. So till now, we have already defined the host variables and cursor in our working storage section. Now let's concentrate on a piece of logic related to three different stages that is open, fetch and close and this particular piece of logic related to these stages need to be included in procedure division of your program. The second stage is open and when this statement is executed it prepare cursor for row retrieval and remember open statement is an executable statement but it does not assign any value to the host variables. The next stage is fetch and in this stage you retrieve data from the result set and assign that data into the host variable. And remember, in fetch statement only, you have to specify the number of rows that you want to retrieve from the result set. Whether you want to receive one row, two row, 10 rows, 20 rows, that depends on your requirement. And again, there's a maximum limit to that. And finally, the last stage of cursor lifecycle is close, where you complete the processing and close the cursor. 
Now let me quickly go through the example so that you can understand how exactly you can declare host variables, DB2 cursor definition and the logic related to all three different stages of cursor. So here's my sample COBOL DB2 program and in this program I'm reading data from the DB2 table. The important point that you need to remember is that this is not an actual code or a complete code because of uh, the limitation of space. So what I've done is I've included or showcase the important entries that you have to include in your COBOL program. And these entries, around these entries, you can build your custom logic as per your requirement. So the program is divided into different division and each division has its own significance. If you want to learn more about each division or what are the number of divisions you have in a COBOL program, then do check out my video on our YouTube channel. So the first division of this program is identification division. And in this division, we generally use to specify the name of the program, programmer's name, date on which it is written. It is generally used for documentation purpose. The second section is working storage section, and it is generally used to specify your working storage variables. So in this case, I have declared array of host variables, and these variables will be used to retrieve data from the result set. The next statement is include SQL CA and it is used to include SQL communication area. The SQL communication area is a copybook that includes a set of variables that can be used to identify whether the SQL statement is executed successfully or it had failed. The next statement is declare cursor statement and it is used to declare the structure of the cursor. And this declaration include an embedded SQL statement which is used to generate the result set. And from this result set, you will be fetching data into your COBOL program. The next set of remaining entries need to be included in procedure division. So the next section is procedure division and the first entry is open cursor. So this will open your cursor and your cursor will be ready to receive data from the result set. Now the next statement is fetch statement and this statement generally retrieve rows from the result set. And the important thing that you need to remember is that in this statement, I'm going to specify the number of rows that I want to retrieve from the result set. And whatever rows or the data is being retrieved will be assigned to the host variables. And in this case, the host variable is H department and it is an array which is capable of storing the retrieved data from the result set. And H indicator hyphen array is basically null indicators and it is generally used to identify if there is any uh, truncation when you're assigning values to your host variables. The last statement is close cursor and it is generally used to close your cursor once your processing is done. And if you notice, there is one more statement that I've used that is if SQL code equals to plus 100. So SQL code is actually a variable of SQL communication area and I'm using uh, to validate or just to know whether my previous statement of SQL statement was executed successfully or not. And plus 100 means that there is no more rows in the result set that needs to be fetched or you can treat it as end of file condition. That means there is no more rows that needs to be fetched now or if you ex re-execute fetch statement again it will result nothing. So this is an overall structure of a COBOL DB2 program in case if you want to fetch data from a DB2 database. Now let me pan a bit so that I can showcase the specific entries for a simple cursor and a cursor with row set positioning. So if you look at the piece of code which is there on your screen right now, it is basically extracted from the previous program and uh, my intention is to showcase how exactly the host variables and your cursor are linked together to perform your multi row fetch or a single row fetch, right? So in host variable section, I've used two set of arrays. First one is ws-tbl-department, dpt, which is used to hold the actual data that you received from the result set that you're going to fetch from the result set. And the second table is a null indicator and it is generally used to indicate if there is any truncation or any other issue when you're moving data from your result set to your actual host variable. So that particular null indicator table name is ws-tbl-ind. And if you look at the cursor definition, I've used declare cursor name, cursor for, and then you have specified your embedded SQL statement that will, that will be used 
to specify the criteria to generate your result set. And if you look at the last statement, that is fetch statement, where the actual magic is happening. So I'm fetching 10 rows from the result set, which is already being created by my embedded SQL statement. And that particular data I'm assigning to H department, which is an array. And again, I'm using null indicator, that is H ind hyphen array. So this is how you can extract data from your result set. That means multiple rows at the same time with the help of simple cursor. Now, in case if you want to use a cursor with row set positioning and you do not want to use normal cursor, then the only change would be in the declaration of cursor. And if you notice this particular code snippet, you'll notice that I've used cursor with row set positioning for and then I have specified my embedded SQL statement and thereafter my fetch statement is again the same. I've used fetch cursor name for 10 rows. Now I know that you might be thinking that what's an idle number or the number of rows that I should fetch when I am executing the fetch statement. So honestly speaking that there is no specific idle number that you should always target. But yes, depending on the volume of data and uh, the guidelines which is being laid down by your DBA. But yes, you should always try for an even number, for example, 10, 20, or maybe 40, 60. Sometimes you can try for 50, but the sweet spot is around 100. So probably if you're dealing with large amount of data, then I think you must consider uh, fetching 100 rows uh, at a time. Ladies and gentlemen, this marks an end to our today's presentation. And I'm really thankful that you have been watching this video till the end. And in case if you have any suggestion, feedback or any other question, then do mention that in comment section. I'll respond back after this presentation. Apart from that, please don't forget to hit like button and do share this video with your friends who are actually working on mainframes or who want to learn mainframe. Once again, thank you so much. Stay safe.